Hi guys, my name is Emily D. Simone with the Garden State Film Festival, and here with me today I have writer, producer Tasha Hardy of the film Curiosity. Tasha, how are you today? I'm good. How about you, Emily? I'm doing well, thank you. So, Tasha, can you give our live viewers a bit about the film? Sure. So, um, Curiosity is about a bored mailman who he's obviously like older in the film, and his best friend is this younger kid um, who lives in this small town with him, and they kind of get into the lives of the people he delivers mail for and he gets in trouble. And this this is a character study for a TV series. Um, and you know, in this particular short, he thinks he sees the girl of his dreams being kidnapped. It's a little bit shaky as to whether it actually happened and he has to figure out how to save her with his younger friend, um, Dustin. That's a fun storyline. Did you say that it's a, this is a possible concept for a series? Yeah, so um, I decided over the next couple of years I was going to do one comedy and one drama, which is now turning into a dramedy. <laughs> so this is the first one. Um, and yeah, so we thought, okay, so if we do a short, if we do, do a, a TV series, um, like a concept or a TV series, we might as well make it a whole short and not just a teaser because, you know, as you can tell, it's a little bit hard to sell a TV series. So if that doesn't happen for some crazy reason, at least, we'll, you know, we can be in festivals and use it to promote our work. Um, so that's sort of the concept behind why we did it the way we did it. That's awesome. No, I mean, like I wish you the best moving forward with that. I hope that that works out. And so, you know, with that said, what inspired your writing for this storyline of a, a mailman possibly seeing a kidnapping? Um, so my my stepdad is um, a guy in his early 70s now. He's a retired mailman. Um, and he's, his best friend is a guy who's like 25 years old and they kind of pal around this town of Adrian, Michigan together and they get, I mean, they don't really get into trouble, like little things that they kind of, they kind of over help their neighbors and, you know, like stuff like they won't pay for parking. They're like, we got away with not pay for parking. Like they're very like funny and simple, but then there's a little bit of them that's kind of broken in their relationship. They're like a little bit codependent. And so I just blew that up. I was like, this would be hilarious if, what if this guy was literally like, a stalker kind of, but he doesn't even know it and he's innocent. Um, and he's got this best friend who wants to be a cop. That's part of it too. And my, my stepdad's friend wants to be a cop as well. And so they're kind of this like, you know, crazy little detective team in this small town. That sounds like such a fun, I mean, like it sounds like your dad's having a blast, but that sounds like such a great concept for, you know, like a, a TV series. It sounds like so, that's actually, that's really cool. I really like that. So uh, when did you get started with this, you know, this idea, this project? I wrote, um, I think I wrote the first couple of drafts about five years ago. And then I can't remember. Um, so yeah, okay. So I was in Michigan and I emailed Bob Clendenin off of his website. He said he was interested. And then I got caught up with other projects. And then years later, I, I met John Lear and John Lear's best friends with Bob. And he's like, why don't you just make it crowdfunded? I'll be a consulting producer. And then it just turned into a whole thing. Like we met Eddie and then John introduced me to the director and it started moving really fast. And so there was a break in between, but we had over probably about nine months, um, a year and a half ago, it just started speeding up and we made it over COVID. You made it out like you filmed over COVID? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't even in LA. Like, I was only on set for a few days, but I did it totally remotely from Austin during. It wasn't the worst part of COVID, but it was like still a pretty pretty bad. Um, and that was one of the reasons I could get the actors too, is because they were available. And so we just powered through that whole process. It was amazing. <laughs> so what what you know obstacles do you think you ran into uh, with COVID and filming and all that? I think um, the biggest one was that we never, like, oh, there were only a couple people I'd worked with before. And so we'd never all met each other. And we only had a few meetings. And then all of a sudden, there we are on set together. And it, it flowed really well. I and mean, it was it was kind of magical. Um, that's more like what could have gone wrong. But like, for me, it was more like the remote thing. Like, I was trying to get props to LA. And there was a snowstorm here. And we got like the mailbag at one in the morning, the day before the shoot. And like, I mean, a mailman has to have a mailbag. Like, you know, come on. Like, you can't just be like, oh, here's this plastic bag with the mail in it. I'm delivering. Like, we couldn't figure out any kind of like, so it was, it was that kind of stuff of just me not being there and them trying to show me what the house looked like, you know, via camera and stuff. I think that was probably the hardest thing. And so, you know, with that, you know, what is it that, how, so what is it that you want like your viewers to get out of this, this pilot, I guess, or I guess, is it a pilot? 
Well, I didn't intend it to be, but it comes off as like a mini episode. Okay. Um, you know, the, the real heart of it is, is, and I mean, I, I'm not sure I've had enough conversations with my real stepdad to know, like, if he really feels this way, but I think he sort of has this sort of like invisibility complex and the character in the, in the, in the movie is the same. It's like, he's just, he feels invisible and he wants to make a difference and help people. And, you know, like the show Barry, people compare it to Barry. It's like, we can kind of all relate to that character of just someone who's like lost and aging and, you know, just feels invisible. And then kind of, he just kind of tries to help people in a way that maybe they didn't expect because he doesn't know what else to do. He has no tools, you know, and no, not a lot of people around him. So it's kind of like feeling like empathy for someone that, you know, just wants to be seen in the world and help people. I love that. That's a great, I love that. So it sounds like with the connections that you said you, you've you made, is this your first time directing or, or not directing? I apologize. Writing and producing? Okay. Um, so I, I lived in Hollywood in my 20s and early 30s and I was a PA and a, an AD. And then I decided I wanted to produce. And so I got into, um, I did a couple of TV pilots. Uh, this was like 10 years ago. One starred Brian Cranston before he was really famous, and the other one um, starred George Takei. So I kind of got my legs there, got into corporate producing, um, did a ton of stuff for other people. But this is the first. This is the first project that I've done that's like mostly like mine, except for I mean, definitely James, the director, you know, influenced the tone and the script, and like it's definitely ours together. But yeah, this is like the first thing of my of my own that I really dived into. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on getting into the Garden State Film Festival with that and all like that's awesome. So how is it then that you found the Garden State Film Festival? A friend of mine named David Seth Cohen, uh, who I just met over someone met over um, online just via a friend of ours. Um, he recommended that I get in or try to get in. And um, he said it was the funnest film festival he's ever been to and just loved it and couldn't, you know, say anything better about it so I just thought I would try and so I'm really excited I was like I'm, I'm not going to a couple in LA I'm like no no I don't care about LA I want to go to New Jersey <laughs> I've never been to New Jersey <laughs> but I just like I like going to film festivals that are fun I don't like you know the, the schmoozy serious ones I just I just kind of want to have fun I think that's how projects get really off the ground anyway so when you meet people that want to have fun with what they're doing oh well thank you for the compliment and welcome you know, congratulations on being brought in and this being your first time. So you are going to come in person? Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, I love to to say, like, this is kind of like a breeding ground for everyone to network and meet other other filmmakers, other, like, directors and writers and producers. And we've seen, like, um, people come out and then, like, work with people they've met through the film festival, which is really cool. So are you currently located in Austin, you said? Yeah, Austin, Texas. Okay. Okay, so you're probably about what, like an hour, hour back with like 2.11 your time? Yep, exactly, it's 2.11. Yeah, okay, so with that, you know, um, what would you say is like, do you have any, like, like what is your like next like thing with either like this project or do you have like another project? You know, like tell me about you and like, like whether it's like like this or like what your background is like more so in it or, Sure, sure. So, um, so the next the next project is called "I Love You So Much," and we're gonna shoot in Austin, hopefully at the end of the year. Um, it's all silent, and it's about a deaf barista um, who's recently become deaf, and she makes finds a way to make a difference with her customers at the place that she works, and she ultimately saves um, one of their lives. And so that's the kind of the drama um, that I'm thinking about. But my my whole thing is everyone's like, do you want to make a feature? And I really don't want to make a feature. I just want to keep on doing this until I can hopefully sell a series. So my whole idea is like make a short, pitch it as a TV series, and just do that until I get burned out. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 into like the short game. I think you know when I was younger, you know I, I worked on features as a PA and an AD, and I, I really wasn't fulfilled by that I want to I want to work in television um even if it's just a hobby so that's you know and I like to work on sort of weird stuff like you know maybe that Wes Anderson would direct or um you know I can't think of another director right now but that you know sort of odd yeah. stuff that we you know, really can empathize with the main character but put them in a really interesting and different situation I would definitely say like what you've described to me so far with like your two 
like with the mailman and then with the deaf, you know, waitress, like those are very out of the box. And it's so cool, like getting to talk to people and like see like what the different ideas are. And it's, it's, a, it's like your ideas like are really like, I love, it's actually like, and you're saying it was silent. Is it going to be black and white as well or just silent in color? Do you think? I didn't think of that. But that's a good idea. No, I think <laughs> I think like as, as, like as a producer, I'm like, hmm, I can make it cheaper if there's no color, which I don't even know if that's true. I should know that. Um, but no, prob probably color, but just but definitely mm -hmm. silent, except for me, there's music in it for sure. Okay. And when do you think you would get something like that started? Um, we're hoping to shoot by the end of the year. We do have um, interest from a, a pretty well-known actor who I can't really say who it is yet, but um, we're, I got this, I have fiscal sponsorship, so I need to like raise money, but I think um, I'll be able to do it through donations through businesses in Austin. So, I mean, I, I can't really tell yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can figure it out by like December. So I'm hoping to shoot. And then Curiosity is still on its festival run probably throughout mm -hmm. the rest of the year or two. So I'm kind of doing both at once. So you're talking about how you prefer the TV industry, I guess, or like, or I, I should say wanting to do like TV like series rather than film can like so like I don't like I'm not like in like that realm can you maybe like explain to me and maybe some viewers as to what the difference is between like the tv and feature film aspect? yeah so yeah yeah absolutely um so I mean features especially independent features they just in my experience they're they're really difficult to hit with people unless you have an extremely big budget and big stars and it takes sometimes years just met someone it's been the last seven years of his life on this one independent film, which is actually really good. But I mean, it's a, it's a risk, you know? And I mean, obviously so is selling a TV series, but for me, it's like, okay, I can make a short film. I can say I made this and I can actually put it out in the world and then I can try and sell it on another level. Um, that to me is more fulfilling than banking on one idea and saying, I'm going to work on this until I'm, you know, in a nursing home, which is <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what happened when I started a feature right now. So I'm a little bit like, unless it's something like absolutely out of this world that I met someone that wrote it, that's like, you know, I love it, or there's there's a whole bunch of money behind it. Um, but I just feel like it's more fulfilling for me to make these little pieces of art. And then if they turn into something bigger, and then also I like the, the character arcs for television. I like that more that sort of like never ending as opposed to, mm -hmm. It's more difficult for me to write and wrap my head around a feature where everything has to be tied up at the end. That's like a thing, a writer thing for me too. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean like with a lot of TV shows, you'll see like different storylines and different ideas that'll come through. So that's, I told, I understand that. Absolutely. So, you know, with your like pretty like wide background in working, you know, with TV, with feature films as a writer and producer, do you have any advice that you could give like maybe some of our high school or college, you know, submission, like, cause that's what the garden state also takes like a lot of student admissions as well. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I know this sounds really cheesy, but like, I always tell people like, you just can't, you just can't ever give up, you know, and it's a really kind of a lonely, I mean, I don't know lonely, but it's like, you know, I live in a place where the film industry isn't prominent and no one really understands what I'm doing. And I have to turn down a lot of social events because I'm at my computer all the time. And it's just like, if you veer in a direction, I mean, any art or, you know, goal you have, you will get some version of it, but it's just like, just not letting anything stop you. Cause I've had, I've been stopped for a couple of years at a time, you know, disappointment or I had something, you know, option and it didn't work out. But I mean like that, you know, it's just to keep getting up and doing it because eventually it, it really will help happen. And I, I've never, you know, I never went to, I went to college for a bit, but I grew up in a, you know, low income family there's no reason why i should be able to do anything like this and be able to have the connections and resources other than i made them myself and just kept going and so i think you know for people especially that are low on resources um or out in the middle of nowhere which sometimes i feel like austin is out in the middle of nowhere um you know you just keep making those connections and um, you know what whether it's in person or on the internet and eventually someone will say yes for sure thank you so much for that like i think like that's like one of the first times I've heard something like that. Like I've heard like a lot of different um, people talk about something very similar, but like your take on it, I really, I, I, I so you're saying like you, you came from like lower income and then like you worked really hard to get like where you are. So that's awesome. Good for you. Like, like getting into like film festival, getting out to Hollywood and getting to work on this stuff. Like that's, that's really awesome. Like I really hope that this, like this TV show, like gets to go somewhere. Are you going to be 
Um, you are going to be coming to New Jersey for the film yeah, festival? I'll be there for the whole run of it. Yeah. Awesome. So like, I will get to meet you in person and I'm actually really excited to meet you in person. You seem like really like awesome. Like I getting to talk like about like your, your ideas and whatnot. So, you know, guys, you can come see Curiosity on Saturday, March 25th at Asbury Lanes from 12.15 to 2.30. Tasha, thank you so much for meeting with me again today. And I do look so forward to meeting you at the festival. Thank you, Emily. I can't wait to meet you and thanks for everything.